All right. So, Emily, I think this will be a lot easier if we start with the cold open question of how would you describe the podcast Welcome to Night Vale for people who have never heard it or even possibly heard of it? So Welcome to Night Vale is a series of stories told by the radio host uh, named Cecil Palmer and about various tales in the town of Night Vale. And it's very Twilight Zone-esque in its weirdness, featuring things such as the dog park. The rules for the dog park are, do not go into the dog park. Dogs and people are not allowed in the dog park. Don't even acknowledge the existence of the dog park. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tales of Our Times. This is a show where we discuss the stories that move us, what makes them so meaningful, and why others could or should find meaning in them as well. This is not a spoiler-free show, so bear that in mind as you continue to listen. We tackle books, movies, podcasts, and more. Where there's a story, there's a reason to read or listen for today's episode. My name is Amanda Stevens, and... Joining me today is once again my good friend, our returning guest, Emily Daniels. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow. Welcome back, Emily. Thank you for having me. Now, this one is very fun because you actually approached me and yeah. said you had a story we had to talk about. I knew you would love it. I yeah, I used to listen to this podcast we just discussed, Welcome to Night Vale. And I haven't for several years now. So I am interested. Yeah, I'm also not caught up. But I was as I was catching up, I heard this and I go, oh, Amanda would love this. This is great. And if I'm going to love it, I'm sure that our listeners would love it out there as well. Now, it is always possible that somebody has missed one of your previous episodes. Emily, would you care to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Emily. I am a English teacher here in Taiwan. Been here about five years now. Mm -hmm. And this show we're talking about for this season of Tales of Our Time. I have kind of had a rule that if we are doing a series of any kind, you can only talk about a single episode, which has so far worked out, I think, in favor, my favor for editing, but also for listeners in like being a self-contained episode. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different because Welcome to Night Vale, we, as we described in the introduction, is an ongoing podcast. It's a it's a fictional radio show from a fictional town, mm -hmm. science fiction genre kind of thing, um, and it doesn't necessarily have an overarching story. There are arcs in it that you can follow, but generally speaking, you could kind of jump in anywhere and kind of start listening from there, and you would only miss, from what I remember, you'd only miss a few things. Yeah, there there are is some overarching story, but yeah, you don't really need to listen listen from episode one mm. all the way to wherever they are now. It's pretty episodic, generally speaking. That being said, you what we're gonna we're gonna try something different. Emily is pushing the boundaries of my rules today by telling me there is a self contained story in three episodes called a story of love and horror. So we're gonna give that a shot today. We're gonna see if we can do it. If you're out there listening to this, it succeeded, I hope. So <laughs> that's the fun of it. We'll find out. Um, but so a, a little bit of like due diligence for Night Vale. Night Vale is a podcast. It was written by Joseph Fink or was created by Joseph Fink. And though it originally... And Jeremy Craner. Jeremy Craner. Yeah, Joseph and, Fink and Jeremy Craner. There we go. So we got them both. And it originally debuted in 2012, which is crazy to me. I can't believe that it ran so long and i listened to it then oh my god i i only started listening to it i think around the time that this was released actually this came out in 2018 was when these episodes were released the episodes we'll be discussing today are episode 121 to 123 yes you heard that right and this is not even close to the end it's a very long-running podcast yeah so <laughs> I think they're at like three, four hundred, two, two hundred something, two hundred something. I when I was close. looking up the information on this ahead of time, it was definitely like two hundred something, which is wild to me. Oh, uh, oh my god, the number of years, especially because it's bi-weekly. 
by week. Oh, you're right. Terrifying. But I don't want to waste any time about this. I just kind of want to get into it because I am so curious what it's going to be about. And I'm frankly nervous. So without further to do, do you think you could give us a summary of not not Welcome to Night Vale. This would be a summary of a story of love and horror. Yes. Oh, sorry. Since this is an ongoing series, even mm-hmm. though it's largely episodic, are there any characters we should know about before we get into the summary? Uh, other than Cecil, who is Cecil Palmer, who is the fictional radio host and kind of the anchor of the show, Welcome to Night Vale. Uh, no, really, he's the only important thing. So he is reading out this story as on as a part of this radio show. Okay. So um, the two characters that they are only really mentioned, like they are introduced a little bit before this, but they are only given a story in this. Okay. For the first time, maybe. So this is their first in their first foray. Yes, their first actual fleshing out over more than just a passing mention. So All right. There's Francis. She works at an antiques shop, and Nazer, the football coach, and he is obsessed. He like lives and breathes football. And so one day they both decide, oh. I'm going to try dating. So Francis dated a little bit. Nazar had not. They meet for a date. It goes well. And then both of their friends and family were like, oh, they were a little distracted after. They continue meeting, going for about a month. And then Francis is in bed one night and she sees on a TV, a dog is on the TV Uh and it comes out of the TV and it says, you aren't supposed to be here. Uh This doesn't belong to you. You will have to make this right. What? And that's the way the first episode ends. Okay. And the second one, Francis obviously ignores this, right? And then so Nazar tells his football team and they're all happy for him because it's nice that he can have something outside of football. Uh huh. And then Francis takes Nazar to her book club and they go, hmm, you hardly seem like the same person. And then throughout all this, the dog keeps coming out of the, the TV to talk to Francis. And Nazar, one time he is looking into the mirror and in the mirror behind him, He sees himself and Francis in the mirror kissing, and then all of a sudden they die. Oh, my God. In this mirror. Yep. Uh So one time they're together, and then Barks the dog, they actually meet him, and it turns out he is the representative of the Brownstone Spire. So wait, the the dog's name is Barks. Yes. Barks the dog. Capital B, Barks. Yep. The dog. Yes. In real life, Francis and real life Nazar meet the dog named Barks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sorry, the name is a little confusing. No, it's okay. Confusing. Continue, continue. So they meet this dog. He's the representative of the what? The Brownstone Spire. So the Brownstone Spire is an entity in Night Vale, which offers a great gift for a great sacrifice. Oh. And so <laughs> the Brownstone Spire tells Francis that she doesn't belong in this universe. Upon hearing this, they go to visit the Brownstone Spire. And the Brownstone Spire offers two choices. Francis can either switch with the her of the other universe, and then her and Nazar can never see each other again, or Francis can stay, but at the cost of the entire other universe. Oh. So then they, they go and visit the other universe, and they meet the other Francis. She seems lovely. She likes to garden. This Francis doesn't like to garden. Is that the only difference? That we're told of, yeah. Like, okay. I think there's some differences in the home itself, but... Okay. Yeah. But other than that, they're, like, largely exactly the same person. The yes. inflection point is possibly the love of gardening versus lack of mm, that Maybe love. love of antiques for this one. Yes, yes. Episode three, um, at first, they're talking, and obviously this is a huge decision, right? And so Nazar is like, you need to return, right? It's Our love is not worth this. And she's like, well, that's easy for you to say, but I'm the one who has to switch and, like meet all of these other people. I have to leave my life here as I've known it. Mm -hmm. So they don't really talk for a bit after. Barks keeps visiting Francis and... Pushing her to make a decision. Yep. Because if she stays as it is, then both universes will collapse. Okay. So she has to choose something or else both this Welcome to Night Vale and that universe are going to collapse. Yes. So the night before the Brownstone Spire's deadline... They meet for one last date. Nazar still says, you should go. And he goes home. They don't spend the night together. And then in the morning, Nazar decides, nope, I can't live without her. So he goes to the Brownstone Spire and says, destroy the other universe. Brownstone Spire says, it is done. And then, oh, no. Yep. So then he goes to see Francis and he sees her gardening. He talks to her and she seems a little confused because it turns out in the morning, Francis had switched. switched. She switched back. 
And so Ebenezer's like, what have I done? So he goes to the brownstone spire and says, Oh my God. No, take it back, take it back. I don't want this. And the brownstone spire says, I can't, but I will let you join her in oblivion. And that's how it ends. You could be deleted. So we don't don't know what his choice is. No, well, actually, we do know. We do know he doesn't stay. Or he doesn't join her in oblivion. So he stays in Night Vale. Yep. Being never the same person again. (laughs) What? I knew you would like it. Oh, my God. I have so many questions that I don't know that this is going to answer because this is kind of the genre of it. Okay, first, before I get any farther... Do we ever find out how Francis got from the other universe into this one? Uh, so a little bit prior to this, uh, there was something with uh, doubles coming, multiple universes, and then their doubles would coming would come to the universe. Okay, okay. So the the switch definitely happened there. So this was you know this was the side effect that mm-hmm. it wasn't important at the time until they decided they wanted to tell this story. Yes, she must have gotten mixed up in a previous event. Yes. Okay. Did the other Francis know what was going on? No. She had no idea. No, yeah. She was just as in the dark as the other one. So when when they met her, did they tell her, like, what was going on? No, they, they didn't really. They were really... just like, oh, we're twins. What's up? Yeah, well, they didn't really, like, interact too much. They just kind of, like, went and saw and observed that universe and then uh-huh. came back. Wise. I guess you're not supposed to meet your doppelganger. And this was read out as a story as something that had already transpired yes. in Night Vale. Yes. So Cecil is reading this exactly, honestly, the way I did. Right. Uh huh. Uh-huh. This happened. Well, love lost. Emily, what was your first encounter with this story? Um, <laughs> did you find Night Vale in general or this one? Uh, this one. Let's both. Um, so I've been listening to Night Vale off and on pretty much since it came out. Mm-hmm. And then so, but I stopped for several years and then mm, maybe a year or so t- ago decided I want to get back caught up because I really like Night Vale. I want to I yeah. want to listen to it again. And then so as I was binging everything that they have, mm-hmm. I listened to this one and I was like, oh, I love this. And actually, I usually listen to when I binge, I kind of mix like three or four different podcasts. But this one, yes. I listen to the first one. I'm like, nope, move this one. And then you move couldn't the next take a one. break. You had to rearrange a cue to get the rest of what was happening yep. here. So then what made this story so meaningful to you? Besides the fact that you were right in terms of I love this, I wanted to hear it. So for me, I love that we have two ordinary people and mm. they have to make this massive decision. Like, mm-hmm. they, they can't just decide not. And so usually we've all read, like, doomed romances, right? But yes. this one, they're super doomed. Either they doom their romance or doom an entire universe mm-hmm. right? If mm-hmm. to choose to be together. So the stakes are not usually that big. And then just the the ending, the way that if they had talked before, they, they tried to talk about their decision and they end up both just making the wrong decisions. And mm-hmm. it's just, oh, it gets me. I really like, this is one of my favorite kind of horror tropes. It's not necessarily just a miscommunication, but I guess it's like just mistimed, mm-hmm. right? Because I, and, and this is part of it too, is I think to do it to do it well, you have to see what's coming mm-hmm. because that's part of it. I think horror is not just being scared. Yeah. It's, it's a combination of the slow or rapid realization of the bad thing that perhaps either has already come to pass or that is going to come to pass and there's regardless nothing you can do. yes regardless of what you're going to do about it and i think what's fun about this is not the threat of it in general because at this point you know that something has already happened mm-hmm. since it's already being told but the the last twist of Nazer changing his mind when you kind of, that that one is very good. I think that's it's one of my favorite things yeah. in well, horror storytelling. Well, and I could even feel as I was telling you the story, like that you you saw it coming, right? When he goes to the brownstone spire mm. and says destroy it, and you're like, oh no. And then he goes to see the new Francis and he sees her gardening, and it's like, oh no. Mm-hmm. Like, and then they talk, and she's a little bit confused and polite and distant. That's it. That's it. Right? It, is sitting there watching it happen, and I don't know. I don't know why that's satisfying for me. It's not it's not that it's satisfying. It's not that I feel good about it, but it is a story that I like to read. Mm-hmm. It's nice to read, listen to, not be a part of. I would never want to be a part of that. No. That's ter- actually terrible. So what do you think others could find in this? Like what what makes this story so meaningful or what would make it more of a tale of our time? This little run in the middle of Welcome to Night Vale. 
So I think one thing that you can learn from it is if you have to make a big decision like this, <laughs> please talk to each other before you do it. <laughs> a very prescriptive lesson this time actually is really consult and be sure. Don't mm -hmm. sleep, like sleep on yeah. it, well, but again, sleep on it and then discuss it first thing in the morning, perhaps. Yeah, well, because they like they kind of squandered their last bit of time together a little bit because of this and that they didn't really talk. They They just they kept stewing in their emotions. Right. And then just going like, we mm -hmm. can't do this. And then each independently made the decision. And it, it's kind of interesting also how they flipped, right? I guess I'm curious why he was allowed to make the decision at all. Because it's her life. Did she, no one gave her permission. It's just like the way the brownstone spire works. Yes, it, I think it, that's what it comes down to is that it offers a great, great gift for a great sacrifice, mm. right? I guess this also kind of falls in the realm of like monkey's paw stories. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who might be unfamiliar with that, it's a it's a horror short story where that's the same thing is there's there's a monkey's paw. If you use it, it, it will give you a great gift, but never in the way that you would want it to happen. And in the original short story, a woman's son dies and she wants her son back. And the monkey's paw brings back the mangled corpse of her son as a zombie mm -hmm. um, that she has to then send away or deal with right so uh stories that kind of follow that same line of logic is like sure you could get what you want but never in the way that you want mm -hmm. our monkey's paw stories this kind of is that yes i just i'm oh now that i think about it the other horror is that like why was he allowed in this decision making process at all mm -hmm. is kind of obnoxious to me did uh -huh. they see the other naser in the no, other universe no they only saw francis yep that sucks i yeah well, <laughs> What else do you like about it? I also really like the the all of the foreshadowing that happens, right? With the dog the first time, it's like you don't belong here, and then they they kind of learn that oh no, she really doesn't. And then again, the the foreshadowing of you meet the other Francis, she likes to garden. At the mm -hmm. end, he meets her, right? Where you because of all this, you can see everything coming. And mm -hmm. again, there's nothing you can do. Nothing, nothing they can you do. can do. Yeah, I guess this is. I would say this is if you want to dip your toes in a horror. I kind of want to say like, listen to this. Um, yeah. Welcome to Night Vale in general is not a horror thing, mm -hmm. not a genre in generally, but it is meant to be unsettling, and it kind of is a good example of like we said earlier, like an X Files mm -hmm. or a Twilight Zone mm -hmm. genre thing. But it's a good, it's a good show to kind of give you a little bit of like almost cosmic horror without ever going all the way yeah i've and also heard like surrealist horror also surrealist horror kind of just surrealist in general because mm -hmm. it's also comedy so this is a fun that yes. i mean it, it was called you told me right up front it's called a story of love and horror so i should have known that it was going to kind of go more in that direction but i just really never know what to expect from this show mm -hmm. so this this is good it's not <laughs> 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 it's not, but it is good. It's a good story. So, Emily, we are almost out of time. Yes. I still have questions about this. But if you were to give a story of love and horror a one phrase subtitle of your very own, what would that be? Um, I So I'm thinking something about, like, um, something about the inevitable. <laughs> At least discuss the inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> Please discuss, discuss the inevitable. <laughs> oh, yeah, like well, that, that is meant to be one aspect of it, right? Is that yeah. you can't change it. Yes, you like that one. Please discuss the inevitable. That's such a like a. Uh, uh, Please does actually. I think that's very Night Vale. It's, it's such a it's such a campy title, but it's very Night Vale. I think it fits for a tale of love and horror. Mm -hmm. Well, inevitably, we are out of time, so. Thank you so much for joining me, Emily, uh, for bringing this story to me. I will be thinking about it all day. But as I said, unfortunately, we're out of time. This has been Tales of Our Time on Radio Taiwan International, a totally real radio station, really from Taipei, Taiwan, with me, your real host, Amanda Stevens. Thank you for listening. And I hope that you enjoyed learning about the fictional radio show. Welcome to Night Vale, a story of love and horror. Please discuss the inevitable, a tale of our time. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.